One of the reasons I videotape is they did studies that found out that a lot of people learn after they hear something twice or three times. Some other people learn because they actually watch something again. And it's also for those wonderful people who didn't show up today. There actually are some. They registered for the class and they couldn't make it. No problem, we got you covered. Uh, my name is Steve. I'm gonna be passing around a little piece of paper. I'm gonna go through these pieces and it will probably be the last time that I'm a lecturer, something they call a sage on the stage. My purpose is to gradually transfer the responsibility for your learning to you. It's not me. I do not know what SAT problems you don't know how to do. So therefore it would be very inefficient, but great business for me to explain how to do every type of SAT problem. That's the traditional model. If you go to any place that wants to take about a $800, they'll ask you to take an SAT. You, you, right now you would be sitting down and, for about um, an hour and a half taking a, a sample SAT test. That's what a typical course does. I used to work for one of those companies. And then they do it again after eight weeks and again after, you know, in another eight weeks. And in between, you guys have to sit through sample problems that we all have to do together. Oh, joy. And we will systematically go through every tip in the book. Okay? That's a great way to make money and a great way for parents to feel like they're getting value for their money, right? Because they made you read every part of the tips book. And they went through two complete SATs, right? And your parents paid $50 an hour for that process to go. You guys have gotten a great deal here. Do, do you know how much you, your parents or you paid for this course? $169. What that basically translates into is about 10 bucks an hour, right? Because we're meeting five times, three hours each time. I'm going to give you this list. Yeah, why not now? So then you don't have to guess. What is he talking about, Lassie? Okay, so I'm going to pass this out now. But in order to whet your appetite, I'm just going to tell you a little story. I took the PSAT in 1974. Yeah, I'm 53 years old. It was the time, if, if, I, I don't know if you know how they score PSATs that give you a two digit number. Still doing that, I think. Three so digits. I got a, what's that? Three digits. Oh, they've gone up to three digits now, okay. So they, they gave me a 59 and a 55. So that was predicting that my score would be 590 and 550. On the verbal. Over the summer I bought one of those books, went through every math problem, looked at every word, went through that the, the word list four times so I could tell is this word positive or negative. I was stuck on a lake with my grandfather for three weeks. No TV. All right, there was TV, but it was during Watergate and every evening that's all they showed, videos from the Watergate hearings. I was so bored, I actually sat down and did the entire book. 800 SAT in math, 720 verbal. That's why I'm sitting here, just because of those numbers. MIT wrote to me, could I join their freshman class? Now, I'm not sure that that happens these days, because. There are test prep places that raise so many people get 800 that you know, it's not so unusual anymore. But that's one reason why some people have recommended that you study really hard and improve this SAT. Oh my God. Um, let's see. Can you guess how many times I've been asked what my SAT score was in, when I was applying for a job? What's that? Never, right, never. The course you're taking is virtually useless after you've 
been accepted into university. Okay? Now, I've decided rather than give you a useless course, I'm going to give you what your parents want. Okay? I'll give you what your parents want. Uh, what do you think you're going to get out of this course? Test prep. Test prep. What does test prep include? Getting ready for the SAT. Okay, what are the parts of the SAT you think? Yeah, you probably covered it. Anybody want to fill in the details? What's that? Critical, critical reading. Critical reading. Okay, that sounds good. All right. So, I didn't take this course. <laughs> it wasn't around. <laughs> we, there was just a big fat book, and you read it, or you didn't read it. I read it. I got a higher score. Rather than me list for you the things that are tips, I want you to work with your tables. If you don't want to do a table, that's okay. I want you to write down what you think are tips. So then we don't have to cover those tips, right? Okay, so that's when we stop.